webinar. Okay, recording in progress. So, Lea, Anit, you can start. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. I'm happy to, uh, uh, very pleased to give a talk on, uh, on this seminar, on, the, on, on this particular subject, on uh, Kirill of Rishitikin crystals and beta subalgebras. Uh, this is, uh, okay. Uh, so, so this will be about our recent work with uh, Vasya Krylov and Ina Mashanova Golikova, and uh, and this particular project is based on on two previous uh, previous projects, one with Alexey Lin on beta subalgebras and Youngians and uh, or the continuous process of wonderful compactifications. And another with uh, Joel Kamnitzer and his former students, Eva Kalachev and Alex Weeks, on uh, uh, crystals, uh, Kashvara crystals and monodermal beta vectors. Uh, so, uh, our main uh, motivation uh, was actually twofold. First, uh, was to understand the, uh, the phenomenon of, of existence of Kirill Freshitikin crystals. Uh, which is some to me it is it is still some miracle that uh, such objects do do exist and uh, the second is to describe the monogram of solutions of beta and uh, uh, for the xxx heisenberg spin chain in terms of in some combinatorial terms related to you know, related to combinatorics of crystals and uh, in fact, we we have some uh, some conjecture re relating relating this conjectural answer uh, 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 about monodromy to uh, to some uh, already known. Uh, uh, Combinatorial shadow of uh, of all crossing functor uh, in the uh, uh, category of uh, uh, well, uh, well, and some. Uh, the derived category of uh, coherent shifts of uh, on uh, Nakajima quiver varieties of type E, D, and E. Okay, so uh, so our our main result is about is about the following uh, following. Uh, Phenomenon. Uh, so we we are trying to to understand the following phenomenon. So so the so, so there are two uh, natural questions, uh, which appear to ha to have the uh, the same uh, same or very similar answer. So in in uh, in type A they they have uh, they have uh, quite the same answer, namely the first question is to classify all, all, all finite dimensional U Q of G hat modules, so the modules over quantum affine algebra uh, quantum groups uh, that uh, admit crystal bases. So. Uh, so the general theory of uh, crystal basis of Kashavara and Lewis sticks uh, applies well to uh, highest weight representations from category O, but finite dimensional representations of the, of the uh, affine quantum group uh, are not from category O. So, so it is, It is in fact not not, not obvious, and uh, the, 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 there is no obvious reason for such crystal bases to exist. So, uh, so this is sort of a miracle that sometimes we have such 
such crystal bases. And in, in the cases they exist, they give rise to uh, finite affine crystals, ophiral Frischitikian crystals. And the second question is, second problem is to classify modules of the Youngian of the finite dimensional Lie algebra G uh, with uh, some emission property I will describe. So, so it is it is also some some natural question. And yeah, so basically our main result is uh, some construction uh, of uh, of an affine crystal from any module of the Youngian with the emission property. So let me start with the with the Youngian. So for any uh, complex simple Lie algebra, to any complex simple Lie algebra, I can uh, attach a quantum group, uh, which is a, a Hopf algebra deformation of the universal enveloping of the current algebra. So Hopf algebra means that it has both product and coproduct, and also it has a co-unit and an antipod. Uh, so the, this particular quantum group, the, uh, the Yangian, has an additional structures. Namely, first, it it is acted on by the additive group C by by automorphisms, which uh, which in fact uh, form the natural action of uh, uh, of the group C, shifting the uh, parameter T in uh, in G of T in the in the current algebra. So. Once I have such automorphisms, I can twist any representation of the Yankian by uh, this family, this one parameter family of automorphism, uh, thus uh, producing a one parametric family of representations from any, for, from any given one. So for any V, I will denote by, by V of U, the corresponding one parametric family of representations so and uh, the next piece of structure is the r matrix so so in general it it uh, it is not true in general that the tensor product of uh, of modules of the of the Yangian, uh in, One order is isomorphic to the tensor product in another order. It is in general, it is not true. But what is true is that if we twist one of the representations, the automorphism, then for generic value of the parameter, the tensor product will be uh, isomorphic. Uh, the tensor product of one two possible orders will be isomorphic. And moreover, this isomorphism can be uh, chosen to be functorial. Uh, so it is it is given by composing the permutation of factors with with some particular element from uh, from the Yangian tensor Yangian. So this gives some structure called meromorphic braiding of the category of uh, modules of the Yangian. So this is this is this structure. And I will denote the image of the universal inner matrix R of U in the in a pair of 
representations as, as this. Okay, so this R matrix has the following properties. So first, it is compatible with the, with the coproduct in this way. So this basically means that if we want to 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 swap uh, one representation to the tensor product of two others, I first swap it through the first one and second through the second. <laughs> okay, and uh, so the next. Uh, he, uh yeah so this is the property that uh the r matrix can conjugates the coproduct in one order to the product in all the opposite order and the most important for us will be the young boxer equation which is the following. So, so it is some equation in the, in the triple tender product of the young gang. So next, young gang is, uh, <clears throat> is a deformation of, of the whole uh, algebra U of G of T, which is still G equals copy of Lie algebra G uh, and the elements from this G are primitive. So it is, so the young young then is naturally acted on by the joint action of, of the Lie algebra G and hence by the joint action of, of the group. And uh, this particular R matrix is invariant with respect to this group action. And also, I I was saying that the Bradyism, this, this sort of Bradyism is meromorphic. So this means that for any finite dimension, uh, pair of finite dimension, modules of the young gen, the image of, of the R matrix is, uh, is a rational function in, in the parameter U up to a scalar factor. Now let me write some formulas uh, uh, expressing this st 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 structure precisely. Uh, so, so for this, I need some generators of the young yeah? and uh, the generator uh, the there is some type independent choice of generators of the young yeah? which just use the structures uh, the structure of a uh, Lie algebra G just on the space G, and this is called Dreamfield G realization. It is sort of minimalistic, uh, minimalistic choice of generators. We have just finite. Uh, so, uh, so in general, the young can is a really huge algebra. It is a deformation of some, of a universal developing of some infinite dimensional the algebra. But here we cho uh, choose just uh, just some finite dimensional space of generators. Namely, we have two copies of G. Uh, which, which are just deformations of the constant G inside the universal developing of, of the current algebra and uh, TG in uh, the algebra with the following defining re uh, relations which which deform uh, the relations on uh, on elements of g and tg in the current algebra namely first the elements from g they indeed form Lie algebra g and the elements j of g are uh, are the adjoint representations, uh, representation of G. And next, 
there is there is a cubic relation expressing the commutator of uh, of j of x with 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 themselves uh, uh, re relating this with some expressions in the elements of G. So this relay, uh, uh, so in the in the current algebra, the right hand side of of this equation should be uh, the right hand side of this equation is zero, but in the Youngian we have a deformation of this. So. Uh, so here, by uh, this bracket, this triple bracket, I denote the just the full symmet symmetrizer, and and x a is some orthonormal basis in G with respect to the invariant form. Okay. So then, uh, so the next, I can, uh, in, in terms of these generators, I can express all the structures. So, so both product and, and co product and uh, uh, the shift to tomorphism and the uh, R matrix. So, first, the shift to tomorphism is just something very easy. The same as in the universal envelopment of the current algebra. The co-product is also more or less easy. So, uh, so it, uh, <clears throat> it says that the elements from the Lie algebra G are primitive, and J of G behave like this, where omega. Uh, where omega is the invariant element in G tensor G, which we, which is uniquely determined up, up to a constant. So for this, I ha I have I have to choose omega to be the killing form. So the next uh, the core unit just takes all the generators to zero. And the antipode uh, takes the lead generators, uh, just, just negate the lead generators, and uh, takes J of uh, of the lead generators to to minus them pl uh, plus plus some uh, plus some multiple of of just the lead generator. So here the, the factor CJ is just the eigenvalue of the Casimir operator on the adjoint representation of G. It is it is some number which is important for the young. So the structure depends on this. Okay, so next there are matrix. There, uh, uh, there, there is no explicit form for, for the R matrix, of course, but but the first non-trivial term is just uh, this uh, invariant scalar product. So model one, U2 minus two, it is, it is just this. Okay, so, so I will need some, some particular remarkable family of finite dimensional representations of the Yangian called Kirill of Rishitikin modules, which in some sense they deform uh, the evaluation representations of, of the current algebra with the highest weights proportional to the uh, to the uh, fundamental ones, but 
But in, in, in general, the, the, these are not just the, uh, the deformation of the evaluation representation. You, you have to, so because in general, irreducible representations of, of the current algebra are not deformable. So, so in general, you, you have to consider some direct sums of of uh, information representations plus some representations with with lower weights, but in type A, these uh, this representations will be just deformations of the of the evaluation. So the general property is that such representation is is generated by a highest we, uh, vector annihilated by uh, by the maximal importance of algebra n plus in in G and J of n plus as well, uh, such that uh, uh, the Cartan subalgebra act by character lambda, and J of Cartan subalgebra act proportionally to this uh, character lambda plus some additional condition which which are uh, uh, more difficult to write down explicitly. So, but in type A, these modules are just called the evaluation modules. In type A, in fact, there, uh, there is a homomorphism pro pro from the young young of G to the universal Velkin algebra, uh, to the universal Velkin, and uh, these are uh, these modules are just the pullbacks. Okay, so maybe let me stop uh, here for a second. So, uh, are there any questions at, at this point? So, this is just some description of the setup. So, what is minuscule? Uh, well, uh, minuscule is the uh, is uh, is the highest weight such that all the all the weights of the corresponding representation with this highest weight form a, a single. Uh, Orbit with respect to the the, the whale group. Thanks. Uh, so uh, so, for for example, in type A, all the fundamental representation, all the fundamental weights are minuscule, but this is not the case in uh, in general. So for example, in 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 type uh, in types. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Uh, you mentioned the triple operation and the J, J realization of uh, J realization. Uh, does it have some relation to Jordan structures? Oh, well, I, 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 so is it in, in, the, in know, interesting <laughs> from that algebraic point of view? This triple operation, why should it be related? Uh, ah, ah. Yeah, I Just mean the, yeah, you mean this, 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 uh, this, uh, this symmetri symmetrization. Well, I don't think, I don't think it is. It is. Uh, and my. I don't know if, if there, if there is any direct relation. Fixed idea is a relation with the uh, the logic of uh, the tetrahedral equation. Have you here heard something? With highest Brewer order. Well, I okay. Well, okay. I'm not. I, I, I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. So. Okay. So. Then let me continue. So now let me define the. Actually, the main hero, the uh, the T operator. So this is uh, some other way to uh, to define generators of the Yangian. 
So this will be some infinite dimensional space of generators, but in some sense it is nicer. So namely, we can start with, with any finite dimensional representation of the Youngian. So if we, if we know at least one non-trivial representation of the Youngian, we can proceed. So let V be a non-trivial finite dimensional representation of the Youngian. Then we can define an element from the tensor product of endomorphisms of, this, of the underlying vector space with the Yangian, just, just by taking the image of the universal R, R matrix in this representation. So more precisely it is. So we, we, we can regard it as a collection of N squared, uh, elements uh, and, and square formal power series with the coefficients in the Youngian, where n is the dimension of, of the representation of v. Uh, and since the R matrix satisfies young Baxter equation, we have the following natural relation between the two operators for different for in fact for any pair of representations v1 and v2, we have this sort of relation. Sorry. Because we can evaluate the triple tensor product Youngian tensor Youngian tensor Youngian uh, in the pair of in in two representations and uh, and uh, one of the factors can uh, remain the, uh, just just universal just the Youngian then we then we will have this sort of of relations for the operators corresponding to the uh, representations of the young end. This is called RTT equation. And in fact, it, it turns out that given uh, uh, any non-trivial representation of the young end, we can regard the coefficients of, uh, of the power series arising as matrix elements of such the operator as generators of the Youngian. And these quadratic relations on these generators are almost defining relations. So we, we just uh, apart, from, apart from this equation, we, we just need uh, only some uh, uh, so so in fact uh, this quadratic equation determines some algebra which is slightly bigger than the young yeah? but uh, it is it is bigger just just by tensoring young with with, with with some commutative algebra, with 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 some additional center, so we uh, so to define the young in, in this generator, we just need some additional relations which kill the center. So, in particular, if we we start with the standard evaluation representation of, of the Yangian of SLN, so with, with, with the standard n-dimensional representation of the Yangian of SLN, then uh, by writing this, this relation, we'll get Yangian not of SLN, but of JLN, which is, which is 
which is bigger, but which is just the tensor product of Yangian of SLN by the algebra of polynomials and infinitely many generators. So to, to get back the Yangian of SLN, you, you just have to kill this additional symmetry. Okay. So next, this is, this is a really nice uh, realization of the young which is which is different from from uh, chain realization and uh, uh, in fact it is it is very useful for writing some maximal commutative subalgebras in the young which give rise to many quantum integrable systems namely let C be any, any element from, from the adjoint Lie group G. Then to any such group element, we can assign a commutative subalgebra in the Yangian generated by all Fourier coefficients of uh, uh, traces of the T operator Multiply multiplied by this group element. So this is regarded as power series with the coefficients in the Yankian. So in fact, to generate it, the algebra, it is it is sufficient to take uh, such a series corresponding to fundamental representations of the Yankian. So the, uh, so the general theorem is that such better subalgebra is always commutative. And this is easy. So this easily follows from the RTC equation. Namely, we have to, we have to prove that uh, these two traces commute for any u1 and u2. And the, you can rewrite the product of traces as the trace of a tensor product. But on the other hand, the, the operator on the, the trace of the, on the left hand side is conjugate to the operator under the trace in the right hand side by the image of the R matrix in the tensor product of two representations to be one and two. because of the RCT equation. So this means that these two traces are the same. And the, the, the generators of, of the beta subalgebra commute. So, so this is the main object. Okay, so now uh, any questions at this point? Okay, so if no, then I continue. So these better subalgebras uh, have uh, this, uh, the same size for all regular uh, for all regular elements of the group G, namely, uh, as I already said, only fundamental of the young and any fundamental representation uh, gives rise to a power series with the coefficient 
uh, with the coefficients in the Yang Yang, uh, who's, uh, well, having some non-trivial coefficients of q2 minus one, u2 minus two, and so on. Some some non-trivial coefficients and in front of all negative powers of the parameter u. And for regular elements of the group G, all such elements are algebraically independent. So we have rank G, infinite series of generators of, of these beta algebras. And, uh, and for, for, all, uh, for regular C, all these generators are independent. So in general, this beta uh, subalgebra can get smaller. And the reason for this is, is that in general, uh, all the generators of the subalgebra commute with the centralizer of C in the group. So in particular, if uh, the parameter of beta subalgebra T is from the maximal torus of the Lie group G, then such subalgebra always commute with the Cartan subalgebra, the Lie algebra. And in fact, this Cartan subalgebra is contained in beta subalgebra in this case, as the uh, uh, just at the coefficients of u to minus one in all all such power series generating beta subalgebra. And now we can and next we can describe the uh, not linear generators of beta subalgebra, but the uh, uh, less. The coefficients of u to minus two in all uh, the power series generating B of C uh, are this sort of things. So these are J of Cartan elements plus some quadratic expressions of, uh, of the Lie algebraic elements. So here, X alpha are the root generators of G, and we have some, some expression of the root generators, which is invariant with respect to Cartan. This is some linear generation combination of, of this. I'm uh, sorry, what does sigma right. power alpha mean? Um, yeah, uh, so alpha is, is a root of G, so it, it can be regarded as the character of, of the maximal torus. And c to the power alpha is, is just the value of uh, of this character on c. Thanks. I see. Yeah. So now uh, there is the the, uh, the following general statement saying is. Saying basically that to determine beta algebra, we we need just just these quadratic elements. <laughs> so so beta subalgebra is is the maximal commutative subalgebra contain, containing containing these quadratic elements because the the centralizer of this finite dimensional space of quadratic elements is already commutative. So beta subalgebra is uniquely determined by this quadratic algebra. It's just the centralized of this. Now, uh, <clears throat> so 
Now, my my next goal is to to describe all subalgebras which can be obtained as as a limit of this family of beta subalgebras. So, so we see that that the parameter space for beta subalgebra or for beta subalgebras is is the space of regular elements in the torus, which is non-compact. But on the other hand, any beta subalgebra is just a subspace in the Jungian, which is a point in the Grassmannian, which is, which is in some sense compact. So, so, we, so we can uh, consider the closure of this sub this sub variety of, of this infinite dimensional Grassmannian. And it will be some compactification of this uh, of this space T reg. And it is it is in fact a very interesting question what uh, what this natural compactification of T reg is. And it turns out that that this natural compactification can be described explicitly. Namely, this compactification of of the space of regular elements and the torus, parameterizing all possible limits of the family of beta subalgebra, is a compactification obtained in two steps. So, namely. Uh, First, we we take the toric variety corresponding to the fan formed by all wild chambers. That is, that is the same as, as as to consider the following. So, so can, consider the, uh, consider a generic uh, T orbit on the flag variety of T. Then its closure is some toric variety, which is which is smooth and which correspond to to the fan form uh, coming from hyperplane from the root hyperplane arrangement. And on this toric variety, uh, we have uh, an arrangement of Of subtori, of uh, co dimension one subtori in T. And uh, so the, 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 the recipe for, <laughs> for, 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 the, for, for this compactification is just to take this arrangement of subtori and blow up all interposable intersections of them. So this this gives some toric version of the the continuous process uh, wonderful resolution uh, for the hyperplane arrangement. Yeah. So so our uh, main theorem concerning this is that the the family of beta subalgebras in the Jungian extends to this compactification as a as a flat family of subalgebras so to to any point in this compactification i can assign a subalgebra in the in, in the Jungian of the same size with this which which is still a free polynomial algebra with the same number of generations, that is, with with rank G series, infinite series of generators. So now, uh, something concrete about uh, about this compactification. 
So in, in a particular example of SLN, this compactification is just the delin Mumford compactification of the space of stable rational curves with n plus two mark points. So maybe let me switch to the whiteboard and uh, and uh, describe informally how this works. Okay, so so M zero and plus two bar is the model modelized space of stable rational curves with n plus one uh, n plus two uh, i'm sorry mark points one of which is zero and another infinity and i i still have one degree of freedom uh namely all other points are up up to proportionality so and this is the maximal torus of the jointly group pgln so t inside gln is just c star to the power n modulus c star this is the same the projective curve with uh, n plus two mark points up to uh, up to automorphisms so next this uh, this module uh, modular space First, it, it has a toric compactification, which is the loss of money. So the, uh, the loss of money and compactification means that you allow the points coincide except for zero and infinity. So zero and infinity, you have to stay alone and other points are allowed to coincide. And this gives rise uh, to the moduli space of possibly nodal curves, uh, but such such that the uh, the graph of intersections of components is is just. It's just like this. So it's, it's, it's just a, uh, it's just a string. Just so the so the corresponding possibly reducible curve is the caterpillar one. So this is a toric variety. Because we still have an action of C star to the power n model as C star uh, by deleting the coordinates of, the, of all the marked points except 
zero and then in each component I have a pair of points zero and infinity which now are nodal points and I can delay it all the all the coordinates of, of the points and now on the historic variety I can blow up all the ind indecomposable intersections of the, of the of the equipizer the i equal the j and this gives rise to to the usual dealing mapper complexification parameterizing all possible curves of this point. So in fact, you have to grow up a cactus from any uh, collection of points points on the loss of mining this is what this is what described m0 and plus two bar Yeah, and in fact, uh, the these pictures describe how beta subalgebras degenerate. So, so seeing this case is just the matrix with the it's just the diagonal matrix. With the eigenvalues z1, zn, and to describe all possible limits of such beta algebras, you have to describe what what happens when several zi go to infinity, say for i from one to some. Okay, this is one possible limit. And another possible limit is when all the i's, uh, also say from in some range, say from one to k, go to some particular finite limit, not equal to zero or infinity. So in the first case, what we get is just uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, so we can regard this limit as a following. So uh, so uh, the i are just epsilon to minus one u i zero and all other so so for I from and all other CIs that do not change. Same. And in this limit, we get. In fact, the product of beta subalgebras in the tender product gan gan of SL K tender gan gan SL N minus K in the gan gan SL N. So here I will have 
beta subalgebra. Corresponding to the matrix U1, UK. Here we have beta subalgebra corresponding to the K plus one, the N. And this corresponds to generating to these sort of curves. Plus one and zero. And another sort of limit is when several points go to a finite limit. Several eigenvalues, one, k, go to the same limit. And this gives the, uh, the following subalgebra. It is generated by beta subalgebra corresponding to this. Non-regular element. So this is a smaller one. So it belongs to the Yankin of SL and invariance with respect to SL. Okay. So in particular, it commutes with everything from the universal enveloping of SLK, right? Universal developing of SLN inside the Yankee. Okay. So, and in this limit, we, we have, of course, we have this algebra, but we also have something in addition that that live in this universal enveloping of SLK. So some, some additional commutative subalgebra uh, inside here, which depends on, uh, on how these points uh, glue together. So in particular, if uh, if all these zi's from i from one to k are just z plus epsilon ui, then this subalgebra is just so-called shift of argument subalgebra in the universal Welkin algebra determined by this collections of uh, collection of numbers ui. That is, it has, it's associated graded is the subalgebra in the symmetric algebra of SLK generated by all the derivatives of central of Poisson central elements in the direction of uh, of this particular element of the Lie algebra SLK. Okay. Okay. 
desire elements from the Poisson center. And we just differentiate several times in the, the direction of, uh, of this Cartan element, E1, E2. <clears throat> The description of the classical part of this algebra, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so, so this, is, this is classical. Yeah. Uh, so this is the description of the associated graded of this algebra. And what is the description of the algebra itself? Is there any suitable yeah, but, uh, convenient uh, description? Uh, sorry. Uh, is there any convenient description of the algebra itself? Maybe generate. Ah, it, 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 itself. Uh, well, in this particular case, uh, uh, yeah, this uh, uh, the the quantum one is, is is also explicit. So you can take as the generators of the Poisson center of SL, of SLK. You, you can take just the coefficients of the characteristic of the characteristic polynomial. Uh, then, then you can just. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, just lived by the symmetrization map, all all the uh, all the derivatives of uh, such elements. Mm -hmm. So if if i are just coefficients of the characteristic polynomials, then then you just symmetrize all, all all these elements, and and these will be commuting elements from the universal model. No, but this is and, just the, and, the, and, the, and this is intuitive again. Yeah. But this is just this description of uh, of the center of USKSLK. If you just take the symmetrization of the generators of the center, it's just the no, no, the center. not only the center. So, so you you just symmetrize uh, symmetrize all all the all these mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I see, I see. But uh, but the, uh, but uh, but. Uh, this description is specific for for for, uh, for SLN. Mm -hmm. So so uh, so we, we have something similar in general. So uh, shift of argument subalgebras always. Yeah, arise. I mean the one, which comes, but, but, the one we come but, from that smoothie algebra, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, but in general, we don't have such uh, such simple expression for generators. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now let me continue with the, uh, with the presentation. Okay, so so this is some natural compactification of the parameter space, parameterizing a bigger bigger family of of commutative subalgebras. Oops, uh, I'm sorry. Um, So now, so, uh, so in fact, our main goal is to uh, to study uh, to uh, uh, diagonalize uh, the generators of better algebra simultaneously in in some uh, natural representations of the Young. So, uh, so uh, the, the 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 first interesting example arise from tensor product of uh, evaluation representations for say for SL for the young gun of SLN where they always exist and their generalizations to other types. So so in this particular case of tensor product of evaluation representations for SLN, uh, the elements from beta subalgebra des describe some higher integrals of the XXX Heisenberg spin chain. So, and this is maybe why, why it is, it is even more interesting than, than just, just the technicalization problem. Uh, 
Okay, in particular, some of such modules appear when when you study equivalent, um, equivalent quantum cohomology of uh, Nakajima queer varieties, namely, according to Molik and uh, Okunkov, uh, the image of beta subalgebra in, uh, in such tensor product of uh, fundamental representations of the young and depending on some, uh, some evolution parameters can be regarded as as the operators of quantum multiplication quantum multiplication by cohomology classes of of these quiver varieties acting on the space of equivalent cohomology which is uh, naturally identified with the standard product so here the evaluation parameters equivalent parameters to the generators of the equivalent cohomology of a point and uh, the parameter c is the quantum parameter is the deformation parameter in the quantum cohomology so this is so this explains that this eigen problem is related to some enumerative geometry so so next for for regular element c we know that beta subalgebra is maximal community of subalgebra since it is since it is uh, just centralizer of so, so one would expect that such subalgebra uh, has uh, has no multiplicity in finite in irreducible finite dimensional representations, and in some cases we can prove it. So, namely. Uh, the property that something acts without multiplicities is in fact two conditions, two open, uh, two the risky open conditions on the parameters. Namely, one of the conditions is that there is a cyclic vector for the better subalgebra in a, in a finite dimensional representation, and the second condition is that better subalgebra acts semi simply that's by the diagonalizable operators so we conjecture and we don't uh, we, we don't know counterexamples that uh, that in fact uh, the cyclic vector property holds uh, <clears throat> always for 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 any reducible representation and any value of the parameter from the compactified space. And in fact, in type A, we have theorem, which is not, uh, not size general, but, uh, but explains that this is, this is indeed the case, uh, the case in many important examples, namely uh, for, for any tensor product of evaluation modules, the represent this uh, this representation is uh, cyclic for all better subalgebra, and in fact, even more, this holds for for any so-called tame representation of a gamma. This is some. Some natural class of representations described by Nazarov and Taras. And for this representation, this is also the case. But uh, the 
the acknowledgeable property is is much more tricky. So there is a natural condition guaranteeing that beta subalgebra acts simply. Namely, if we know that all the operators uh, <coughs> coming from elements from beta subalgebra are normal with respect to some positive definite emission form of, on the representation, then they are all diagonalizable. But for this, we need some nice emission form satisfying the property that the emission conjugate of the beta subalgebra is again the same beta subalgebra. And in type A, we have such emission form for any Kirill Fresh Tikin molecule. Uh, so more precisely, we can take any evaluation representation with the highest weight uh, being the being any multiple of, uh, of a fundamental one, and the evaluation for parameter being purely imaginary. Uh, then. Uh, on any tensor product of such representation, we can define just just uh, just the simplest possible emission form, just just the product of uh, of the standard emission forms of on on each of the factors. Uh, standard emission form means the, the ones preserved by the compact. Uh, real form of uh, of the group G, which is determined uniquely up to a constant factor, and this emission form will satisfy this property. So, in fact, this this theorem goes back to to classical works of. Of Kirillov and Rishitikin, maybe uh, already 30 years ago. So, in particular, uh, this uh, the condition that uh, beta subalgebra is self adjoint with, with some. Uh, with respect to some emission form, this condition is closed. So once uh, we have such condition for for any C from from the compact torus uh, from any C from uh, being a regular element from the compact torus, we, ha we have this condition for for any. Mm, uh, for any limiting subalgebra, limiting beta subalgebra as well. So for, for for any parameter in the closure of regular locus of the torus as well. So this allows us to define to uh, to, uh, to this allows us to, to to consider the set of Eigen, of joint eigen lines for beta subalgebra in a given representation as a covering of this real locus of the model I space. So we can we can define uh, a covering which I denote E sub D of C over the parameter space. In fact, the, the problem we're addressing, we addressing here is to, to, to compute the, the monodromy of this covering. So in other, in other terms, so they, they again, they, uh, the joint take again lines and joint taken of the beta subalgebras 
correspond to some solutions of al algebraic better answers for the XXX Heisenberg chain. And these solutions of better answers are some, uh, some complicated functions on the parameter C, namely they are some multivalued functions of C. And, and it is a natural question, what is, what is the monodromy of these multivalued multi functions? So uh, from from this from this uh, theorem, it follows that the monodromy group, the monodromy group of uh, of the solutions of beta angles, it 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 may be really big and it, it, I, I don't believe it, it can be underst uh, completely understood, but it has some understandable piece which comes from from the fundamental group of the real locus of, of this natural compactification of the parameter space. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Do you mean nested beta ansatz uh, equation? For the high rank, it is not uh, so simple as in a certain case. Yeah, of course. But um, in fact, <laughs> I don't. I don't mean any any, any particular beta ansatz procedure uh, when saying this, because because here I'm just I'm just interested in the in the monodromy of, of eigenvalues of, of joint eigenvalues of uh, okay. for for for, for better subalgebras in, in in the vector space so, so uh, well sometimes it can be uh, uh, the joint eigenvalues can can be obtained by some beta and such procedure which is which is uh, easier for SL2 and much more complicated for, for SL and for N bigger than two, but but still it is it is it is some precision and in all in all known case it it gives some multivalued functions on the parameters. I have a small so, question uh, then yeah. about uh, this theorem. So this mm -hmm. uh, multiplicity uh, three of uh, Kirill Prishetichin is uh, related to this minuscule property. So, well, uh, therefore, is it true for other types of minuscule weights? Your result? Uh, 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 the, uh, that, yeah, for minuscule weights, it, it is always true. But, but in fact, Kirill Prishetichin model uh, modules, uh, it, it is a wider class of, of representations because. Yeah, yeah, but they are multiplicity free only for minuscule. Yeah. So for yeah. So for multi uh, for multiplicity free, uh, this is uh, this is always true. Yeah. Ah, so therefore, your result could be extended. Yeah. 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 We, can, we, we can we can we can ext we actually uh, yeah. So it naturally extends from from type A to uh, to minuscule representations of any type. Okay. And the, and and uh, and the proof is actually the same. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but uh, but uh, uh, but the, uh, but the next is less trivial. So uh, so uh, so we can always uh, uh, consider the uh, regard the, regard the set of joint joint again values as a covering of the real locus of the model space of the of the parameter space and. Uh, and ask a question: uh, What is what is the monodromy of this covering? So the, the idea is, in fact, it goes back to our joint work with uh, Joel Kamnitzer and his students. Uh, 
uh, that there is a natural structure of a crystal on, on the fiber of this covering such that the monogamy is given by uh, some natural combinatorial transformations of this crystal structure, namely by Schutzenberger involutions uh, related to root to any root subsystem in, in the root system of, uh, of G. Uh, so let me uh, describe this uh, the structure maybe in, in more detail. So in general, the crystal structure is the the uh, crystal is a combinatorial module of of a representation where basis vectors in weight space are just represented as, as just points of some, uh, uh, just vertices of some graph marked by weights of the representation. And uh, uh, the action of, of the Chevalier generators of the Lie algebra uh, are represented by some arrows connected this uh, connecting these points and there is some prescription on how to get such, such structure on the, on the set of joint taken values namely we can fix some 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 particular fiber of of our covering over some over some generic point, some regular point of a torus, and we can we can as, assume that it belongs to to some particular connected component of the complement of a torus to the arrangement of dimension one sub tori corresponding to to the root. So we can assume that it is bounded by subtori corresponding to a fine simple root. Then in inside beta subalgebra, inside such beta subalgebra, we have a Cartan subalgebra. So the set of joint taken values, uh, there's all the joint eigen lines are just one dimensional subspaces in uh, weight spaces. So it, it, it agrees with, with the weight gradient of the representation. So this gives a labeling of, uh, of the elements of the set by weights of the representation. And the next, I can define the arrows corresponding to any affine simple root uh, by taking parallel transport to the boundary, to, to, to the boundary component determined by the corresponding simple root. Namely, the limiting beta subalgebra corresponding to such a boundary point uh, agrees with the corresponding root SL2. So, so uh, the decomposition into a lines with respect to some such limit, limit, limiting beta subalgebra uh, Agrees with the decomposition uh, with the decomposition with respect to the corresponding root SL two. So, uh, so this splits the set of joint taken lines into subsets 
<laughs> which corresponds to the decomposition with respect to root SL2. So it's it, it, it splits it into uh, strings because any representation of SL2 is kept, kept on the one dimensional space in, in each weight subspace. And we can define the the arrow corresponding to generators EIFI is just it's just an arrow acting along this the uh, along the corresponding strings. So let me explain it maybe the whiteboard. I'm so sorry, but we have just about five minutes left. Oh, oh, oh okay. There's, uh, there's no problem. So, uh, so I, I, I'm, I'm always, I am almost finished. So, uh, so I mean that suppose C is is from the regular locus of the compact torus in the logarithmic coordinates. This means that C belongs to some alcove, okay, this one. And this alcove is bounded by the hyperplane corresponding to affine simple roots. This is alpha one equals zero. This is alpha equals zero. And, and this is this corresponds to a fine simple roots. Theta. Okay. So uh then beta subalgebra. So, so this uh, so the spectrum the spectrum of beta subalgebra corresponding to this generic element C doesn't have any combinatorial structure. But when you take a limit to some point on the boundary. The, the corresponding limit in subalgebra consists of, of two parts, as I already explained. So one of them is a smaller beta subalgebra, which is invariant with respect to the root SL2. And uh, we have some additional generators from the universal enveloping of this root SL2. And namely in this case, uh, we have only one additional generator, which is just HI from this I root SL2. This SL2 corresponds to the I. And the spectrum of, of the subalgebra generated by these two things agrees with the decomposition of the, of the representation uh, with respect to the local circle. So it decomposes into direct sum of L lambda. So beta subalgebra of C naught acts by constant on each of the summons, and the I H I just gives the weight decomposition for each of the sum. So this means that joint taken lines can be labeled by first the irreducible component. And the weight space in this irreducible component. So this splits the set of joint taken lines into this into a, uni, a union of 
strings like this. And so we have a unique way to put the arrows corresponding to the action of the fi. And we can do this uh, and we can do this for any affine simple root. So for, from each boundary component, we can bring such combinatorial structure, such part of combinatorial structure from the limit to each boundary component. So we don't see such all the all such arrows at once. There is no point where where all they are seen. But once we have a unramified covering over over such an alcove, we can we can bring the parts of this combinatorial structure from different boundary components and put them together. This gives a, 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 a structure of a crystal, which appears to be a, a Kirill of Rishitikin crystal in this situation. How you prove that it's crystal? Well, uh, <laughs> uh, well, in fact, uh, in fact, uh, we have already proved this uh, for uh, uh, the uh, the analytical statement for uh, the Egan problem in the in the Godin model, and this gives not Kirill of Rishitikin crystal, but but the usual Kashavara crystal for the finite dimensional G, and uh, we can use this in the following way: we can. We can observe that the, the, the limit of beta subalgebra in the Youngian, when C is the exponential of uh, epsilon chi, where chi is a Cartan element. When Yang Yang degenerates to the universal enveloping of the current algebra, so we can view the Yang Yang as, as the epsilon deformation of the, of the current algebra. And this is the same epsilon here and here. So in this limit, uh, Beta subalgebra becomes the universal Gaudin subalgebra in the universal development of the current. And uh, <clears throat> for the spectrum of the universal uh, of the universal Gaudin subalgebra in the in the universal development of the current algebra in the standard product of population representation, it is known that uh, uh, the analogous construction gives a Kashavara crystal. So this means that if we take limit of C to, to an angle of the alcove structure, so angle is far from, from, the, uh, uh, from one of the root, but, but, uh, but we still have we, we still have all hyperplanes except one in the neighborhood of, of this limiting point. So we can take the limit of not the whole structure, but, but the part of, of, of the structure when, when C goes to this limit. And it is known to be just the Kashavara crystal of the corresponding final dimension. But it's known because of what? Uh, uh, and uh, yeah, and for for Gaudin algebra, it is it is known. Uh, so the argument is uh, the argument is like the uh, Joseph's theorem. So we we can we can prove that uh, that uh, such crystal structure is compatible with the tensor product 
and we can show that for uh, for minuscule representation there is no choice. So from this construction, we more or less by definition we always get semi-normal crystal, and the only problem is to prove that it is normal. But uh, this is not a problem if if my highest weight is minuscule, because uh, then the representation is weight multiplicity free, and then any any semi-normal crystal is in fact normal. Uh, uh, and next, once you have some compatibility with tensor product, you can prove the same for any representation. But multiplicity free only for the for fundamental. For Kirill Frischetichin, for other weights, it's not. Yeah, uh, uh, yes, yes, but uh, 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 but next you you can prove some compatibility with the tensor product, mm -hmm. uh, and when you decompose tensor product, you get not only multiplicity free representation, but any any other. Well, I, uh, in fact, <laughs> maybe I can can explain it uh, okay. separately. So, so, so it is. So, in general, this is a, it is a bit, a bit long story. Okay. So, okay, uh, as I see, my my time is already up. So, uh, so it is it's a good point to stop. Uh, Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you for the talk. Definitely, we can continue it somehow later. Yeah, yeah, and maybe we have time only for one short question because we over time now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah. any question? But so, uh, uh, I have some uh, short uh, question. Uh -huh. quite philosophical uh, uh, is uh, um, the subject is related to to the total positivity questions ah you mean uh, you mean to this question uh, uh, yes I, 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 I hope yes so so so, uh, so uh... the crystal basis from my my point of view are closely related to the question of uh, total positive positive parameterization of some algebraic uh, objects like groups like like Grismanians uh, representations and others but what is the uh, Hermitian part of this uh, correspondence how it is related how uh, how it uh, correspond to the positivity uh, property well, I I don't know actually. So so, so in this business, we we, we just use uh, use the uh, emission property as, as a technical tool okay. for, 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 uh, for proving that something is decanalizable. But, uh, but of course, it is it, it should be related to something. Uh, so. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Can I also ask a very short question. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. You spoke that you said that when you have um, certain uh, eigenvalues that go simultaneously to the same value, right? Mm -hmm. Then you that the uh, a better algebra uh, converges to certain combination of uh, argument shift algebra, something else, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I suppose right. you now take all the eigenvalues go to the same value. So you get yeah. some kind of uh, argument shift algebra inside the young gap, right? Right. So, uh, so uh, yeah. So this is uh, this is in fact an interesting uh, particular case when say C is as I already wrote is is some epsilon times yeah. chi, where chi is from Cartan. Yeah. Then the, the limit of, if we do not degenerate young, yeah, just just uh, <laughs> just if this just remains a subalgebra in the young, yeah, so the limit of such beta subalgebra when epsilon goes to zero is a product of beta subalgebra of the unity 
mm -hmm. times times shift of argument subalgebra corresponding to this high. But beta of unity is just center, isn't it? No, no, it it, it, it is not, no, 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 not at all. It is it, it is it is uh, it is still a big subalgebra in 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 the Yangian. Mm -hmm. But this is just an invariant with respect to the uh, to the adjoint action of the group. Mm -hmm. So the only thing I can I can say about it that it commutes with the with with, with the copy of the universal enveloping algebra of G. Mm -hmm. Because I know that uh, the, and, the argument shift the, algebra is produced from the co-multiplication in the universal envelopment. So I just wonder whether there is certain co-multiplication lurking there, but sorry, I don't know. Well, I, I don't know. No, oh, I mean, for instance, in your construction, which involves uh, the Akas Moody algebras and so there was this multiplication. So I just wonder, there is some multiplication here as well, but okay, just probably it's better to describe discuss this privately another time. Yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe we can describe, uh, discuss it later. Uh, yeah, but, but in fact, uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah, in fact, I, I, I like very much, uh, very much this, this fact, because this, because it gives some some alternative description of of the of the quantum shift of arguments subalgebras. So so uh, no. So uh, the, uh, originally there the, there was only one way to to define mm -hmm. uh, define them in a uh, to type independently for, uh, just uh, just by some Hamiltonian reduction from the center on the critical level mm -hmm. of the Fankat's Moody algebra. Yeah. But this is a different way. So this uh, generalizes some original idea of uh, uh, Nazarov and Olshansky. Mm -hmm. so, uh, oh. so, so, so well, at least so in the case of GLN, I know how to do this in, with using mm -hmm. some yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so, so in the case of GLN, and, uh, and in fact, uh, or other classical algebras as well, it, uh, such construction was already known. But but uh, originally, it used the uh, sort of um, uh, evaluation of homomorphism from the young game to the universe. Yeah, I, I know, no. But, 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 but here, we, we actually don't need it. So, so we, yeah, that's, yeah, I, we, yeah. We, we get something in the gang and which we should, yeah, but yeah. there is one a third approach which is based on the uh, so called quasi derivations of Dmitry Gurievich. He's not here mm -hmm. anymore, he, he has left the, the audience. I saw this, but yeah, we can discuss this privately later. Yeah, mm -hmm. I believe we are completely over time now. So, Leonard, thank you for your talk. And I will.